Yes, yes, yes. About three weeks ago, the entire church went up to Orlando and we went to Holy Land. Woo! It was an awesome experience. Yes, it was. And we're going to talk about that place today. While I was there, they had some, they had some things that, that signified that they came directly from Holy Land. And they, indeed, they said, this rock, Jesus touched this rock. So everything that they told me Jesus touched, you know, I, I, I you know, I touched her too. Amen. Because I, I, if I had never been touched by Jesus, I don't touch the rock. He doesn't touch you. Better listen to me. Because I know what God can do Amen. with the rock. Amen. Amen. So now I need you, I need you to focus and stay with me this morning. Because I need you to understand, first of all, what holiness is. Uh, we all have our interpretation of holiness. Some say, I heard people say it's a lifestyle. I heard some people say you can't live for God without being holy. And, and, and that's all well and fine, uh, sisters and brothers. But my thing is, how do we get holy? And once we get holy, how do we stay there? We know how important it is. I know it's important for me to be holy if I'm going to serve the Lord. Can anybody agree with me? Amen. So now, um, I'm going to give you a few scriptures. Get, get my ministers. I need my ministers out here. I get, I've got one minister out here. Uh, I, ain't, I don't feel my help. <laughs> they don't understand that when Moses was, when Moses was, they was in battle. There was, there was some assigned men that was, they were assigned ministers to hold a man up, and I need my help right about now. Can you can, can you understand what I'm saying? So right now, um, I need you to understand that holiness is very important. And today we're going to talk about the Holy Land. Um, but before we can get there, we must understand what holiness is. Let me give you some scriptures. Acts 4 and 27 says, Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant, Jesus, your anointed. So now I said, your holy servant, Jesus. Y'all with me? Acts 30 says, Stretch out your hand to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of of your holy servant, Jesus. Anybody follow me? Now it goes on and says, what do you want us? What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? This is Mark 1 and 24. Have you come to destroy us? I know you are the Holy One of God. Y'all stay with me now. Stay with me. Um, then Luke 4 and 34 says, Ha, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know you are the Holy One of God. You get on. I pray I need my ministers out here right now. Tell them whatever they're doing, forget it. Tell them whatever they're doing, forget it. You disown the Holy and Righteous One and ask that, ask that a murderer be released. You disown, you disown the Holy and Righteous One and ask that a murderer be released. And what we must understand, oh, he'll be all right, he'll be all right. Same, my brother, same. You leaving? No, 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 no. He gonna, he gonna be all right, sit down. You need this word today. You need this word, sister. Sister Nick, he all right. You need this word, I'm telling you, you need this word. You need this word, amen. You need this word. Yeah, 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 amen. One more time. Acts 3 and 14 says, You disown the holy, holy and righteous one and ask that a murderer be released to you. So in every one of these scriptures, if you notice, anybody face FaceTime live with me today? If anybody noticed, every one of these scriptures, every one of these scriptures indicated that Jesus was holy. I need you to know what made Jesus holy. It is who, where he came from. Before Jesus was with us, he was with who? God. 
And we know the holy, the one that made the holy ones holy was the holiest of holies, and that is God. So now I need you to understand that the Holy Land is, is where I need to be. The Holy Land is where I need to be. Our scripture reading for today is 1 John chapter 2, um, 18 through 29. I'm going to ask you to stand for the reading of the word. And it reads, Dear children, the last hour is here. You have heard that the Antichrist is coming. And already many such antichrists have appeared. From this we know the last hour has come. These people have left our churches, but they never really belonged with us, otherwise they would have stayed with us. When they left, it proved they did not belong with us. And you are not like that, for the Holy One has given you His Spirit. Y'all better listen to that. And all of you who know the truth, so I am writing to you, not because you don't know the truth, but because you know the difference between the truth and the lie. And you is a liar. Anyone who says that Jesus is not the Christ, anyone who denies the Father and the Son is an antichrist. Anyone who denies the Son does not have the Father either. But anyone who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. You must remain faithful. You must remain faithful, watch this, to what you have been taught. You must remain faithful, D. Hear what the word say? To what you have been taught. I have been taught, if I'm a member of a church, I need to, I, when I sat in the chair, I said every time the door is open, if I'm, if, it, if I'm able to be there, I should be there. You must remain faithful to what you have been taught from the beginning. If you do, you will remain in fellowship with the Son and with the Father. Nothing will bother you. Nothing will get to you because of the fellowship that I'm in. And in this fellowship, we enjoy the eternal life we promised. I am writing these things to warn you about those who want to lead you astray. Satan will use anything or anybody. He'll use anything or any, he'll, use, he'll use situations. Right when you're about to get a breakthrough, Satan said, I got to, I got to do something because I, I got to do something because if I don't, if I don't stop her, she's going she gonna, to she gonna go in and she's going to say something in the church that's going to turn the whole church around. I, I, I can't let him get the church this Monday because if I let him get in church Monday, what can I use? Come on, come on. Nothing is sacred to Satan. Oh, come on. Nothing is sacred to say. God says, I see somebody suffering, I'm going to take them out of the suffering. Say, say, can I use her? Can I use him? I am writing these things to warn you about those who want to lead you astray. But you have received the Holy Spirit and he lives within you. So you don't need anyone to teach you what is true. For the Spirit teaches you everything you need to know. And, he, and what he teaches is true. It is not a lie. So just remain, just as you have been taught, remain in fellowship with Christ. And now, dear children, remain in fellowship with Christ so that when he returns, you will have full courage and not shrink back from him in shame. Since we know that Christ is righteous, we also know that all who do what is right are children of God. So now we must maybe see. Now we must understand as we dive into this word, we must understand, first of all, it's not your choice. I talked to you last week that you didn't choose God, God chose you. So why do I think I have say so over what goes on in my life? I was chosen by God. So if I went through something, it was not to kill me. If it didn't kill me, it was to make me better. And then guess what? If I ain't got better from the first time, I'm going to go through it again to see if I learned something from the first time. And then if I go through the same old thing, and I get the crazy I did the first time, like I used to do out there on the street. Get one, and I got to go through it again. Something's going to keep happening and keep happening till I understand that peace should dwell wherever I am. Amen. If I'm a child of God. Yes. How many times 
times I got to die? How many times I got to suffer? How many times I got to look like an idiot? How many, how, how, how long yes. Yes. must I keep going through because I won't stop pretending? How long? I won't stand up and just say, God, I love you for real. They say, even though you slayed me, I will yet serve you. Yes. Job, he took Job, he took, he took Job's pride and joy. Yes. He took Job's pride and joy. Wasn't the wife? Job, only problem God had with Job was the, you can always tell the problem God has with you because it's the first thing he takes from you. If I got somebody in my life I need to be helping and I don't help them and I love them, guess what? God's going to take them from me. I had my wife in my life and, 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 and I should have been doing right by her the first time we were together. We were together for eight years. I wasn't doing right by her. So God took her away from me because he knew how much I love her. So he took her away from me. So when I don't do right but what I'm supposed to be doing right, bye, he will, I'm telling I'm a living witness, he'll take it from you. Because you're not understanding who you are. You're not understanding why you were put here on this earth. I just gave you five, five scriptures. And all of them indicated that Jesus was what? Holy. He wasn't holy because he delivered people. He wasn't holy because he, he, he did everything right. He was holy because he had been with God. And here you are. Attaching yourself to somebody who has not been with God and let them change your life. Are you serious? You're attaching yourself to somebody who has not been with God and letting them change your life. I love my wife, but she ain't going to change my life. I love my mama. She, God can take them off. It ain't going to change my life. You know why it ain't going to change my life? Because I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing by my mama while she with me. And you don't understand the power that you have. The reason you don't understand the power that you have is because you don't understand the significance of the Holy Land. You don't understand the significance of the Holy Land. I remember when, in book markets, I want to book markets, I remember when, when, when God told, Abel, told, told Moses, he said, Moses, take off your shoes, but this is hollow ground. Bookmark that. I'm going to tell you how the ground got to be hollow in a minute. Because Moses, Moses was a servant for real of God. He was a real servant of God. Job endured what he had to endure because he was a real servant of the Lord. My question to you is, you don't find out what your servitude, when you have an opportunity to look good and do what you're doing, you find out your servitude when times get tough. Would I quit down what I'm doing with God because of tough times? I'm not a real servant. Come on. I'm not a real servant because I don't understand the, the magnitude of who I am. I am still that in God. I'm, I'm still that in Satan. And, and God allows Satan to show me. He allows Satan to show me. It's not about what you don't do. A do do. Gift. He said, love is a gift given unto you by God. You can't earn it. But you got to freely give it. You can't earn it, but you got to freely give it. See, your problem is you can't you can't see how much love you are because you think you earned it, and then when you mess up, you feel like you ain't got no love to give because you because you messed up. God said, "Don't worry about your mess up. My son Jesus died for your mess ups." But listen to me. Oh, listen to me. What you got to understand is you must understand the, the process and the power of the Holy Land. How many people are going through some things they don't want to go through? Raise your hand. Huh? Because you don't, that's because you don't understand the power in which you have. The power of the Holy Land. The Word of God says, the Word of God clearly says, He said, He said, He said, He said, uh, 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 He said, Dear children, in the last hour, the last hour here, you have heard the Antichrist is coming. And, and, and already there are 
There's some, some right up here in the church. He ain't, Antichrist don't need to be out there in the world. They ain't out there trying to serve the Lord. What do you need the anti out there for? All of them out there pro, pro Satan. Because they ain't got no clue who they are. The ones the Antichrist wants to affect are the ones who think they're following Christ. And God said, have you considered? Have you considered? I bet you, Lord, if I let this happen, she won't serve me. I bet you, Lord, if I let that happen, she won't, he won't serve me. What is that thing in your life that if God let happen when he told you to go to the other side? In other words, he said, go to the other side. He said, well, in the process, he knew there was a storm was coming. He knew a storm when he put you in the boat called life. He knew there were going to be some storm. But just because you meet Jesus, you think it's supposed to be clear selling. My brother and sister will tell you why in the world they won't persecute you if they persecuted the one you follow. Because you don't understand what Jesus came for. You don't understand what Jesus came for. He came from heaven. He was with God, so that made him holy. His father was not a man, so that made him spiritual. His mother was made of flesh, so that made him that made him be a, position him to relate to man. Y'all with me? So, but he said anybody who he said from in the, in, from this we know that the last hour has come. These people left our churches, but they never really belong with us anyway. So you got some people they just can't put down their tradition. They just cannot put down their tradition. When I first used to go to church with my wife, I was, I was, I was so traditional. I thought I had to be in, in charge of the house. Because religion said, religion said women submit to the man. But the spirit said, submit to the man as he learned to submit to Christ. And, and, and see, see, when he when he learns, it's not about him. It's not about him doing what Christ wants him to do. It's about him becoming Christ. See, my wife and I, when we ninety percent of the time, when I got an idea or she got an idea, she finished my thought. I finished her thought because she has become me and I have become her. Christ has to be the same way. When I get yoked up with Christ. Huh? Like he said this morning, I, you missed the power, power place in the class. He said, when, when, you, when you, God got you walking in the right direction, I'm walking, you, you're walking in the right direction, Bobby, you're doing all the right things, David, you're walking in the right direction, and then you start talking. You talk your way right out of hell into hell. And then sometimes, we learned this morning, he said, now you'll be walking in the right direction, and then you'll start praying. Instead of God got you on the right path following Jesus, and then all of a sudden you'll pray, Jesus, I ain't none of you. I'm just a man. I ain't Jesus. Why I got to go through this? You, you pray yourself right out of walking in the hell. He said, when you start following Christ, stop talking. When you start following Christ, stop praying. Just do it. All y'all black folk like to say, I'm fixed to do it. And you fist to go to hell too. <laughs> All because you can't put down your religion. I don't care how much I teach spirituality. God will, God will put you in a place to see if you're yet spiritual or you still yet religious. He will put you in a place. Am I yet spiritual or am I yet still? This is what I do know. I don't know nothing else. He said, but you are not like that. Those who turn away from Jesus. He said, you are not like that. Why am I not like that? He said, the, for the Holy One has given, has given, has given you His Spirit. No matter what Jesus went through, Jesus cousin John the Baptist died, and Jesus kept doing ministry. Lazarus, they sent for Lazarus, and Jesus kept doing ministry. 
I get sick. I burnt my arm the other day, y'all. Y'all need to see it. Big old, I got a big old bed. I should have <laughs> A real bad burn on my arm. I say, I ain't going to take it to my arm burned up. No, I kept doing ministry. I burned it Thursday. I burned it Wednesday and I was in church Thursday. And it wasn't even wrapped up. Remember this. When we get down to this part. Now you gotta understand. It says, but you are not like that, for the Holy One has given you his spirit. The Holy Land, that land where the Holy Land is, is considered holy because of what? Of what they put there. Y'all notice that? We went to the Holy Land. It's on a, it's on, it's on the corner of Bruton and uh, Windermill and Conroe Road in Orlando. It's on the corner of Bruton and Windermill Conroe Road in Orlando. In Orlando. So now, that is the Holy Land. It was placed there. If a storm comes, they don't pick it up and say, we're going to move it to Tallahassee until the storm leaves. <laughs> No matter what, Hurricane Andrew, Hurricane um, Charlie came through there like a tore out that door. But guess what? They did not move the Holy Land. They didn't say, okay, all right, we're going to relocate Holy Land to a place where there's no storm this week. And then after the storm passes, we'll put it back where it was. And when the storm comes, what we want to do, we want to relocate our thinking. We want to relocate our feelings. Because you don't understand the Holy Land was put in a place for a purpose. It was put in a place to say we will weather the storms because of who put us there. We put in a place to say even if a hurricane comes, we know who sent the hurricane and the one who sent the hurricane was the same one that put Holy Land where he put it. So you think he's going to destroy it? Listen to me, saints. And this is what you must understand. It says, so I am writing to you not because you don't know the truth. I'm writing to you because you know better. I'm talking to every one of you because you know better. You know better. You ain't, what you don't understand, you ain't lying to the bishop. You ain't lying to the members. You lying to yourself. It's hard for you to look in the mirror. Because whether you weather the storm or not, I'm going to smoke a bone and get me some barbecue chicken today anyway. Y'all know what I'm saying? Your weather the storm don't change, don't change what, don't change where God put me. You hear me? Now I'm going to tell you how to get there. I'm going to tell you the important again. Watch this. It says, anyone who denies the Father doesn't have the Father. Anyone who denies the Son doesn't have the Father either. But anyone who acknowledges the Son has the Father. Watch what it says. Bookmark that. So you must remain faithful. You must remain faithful, unmovable, to what you have been taught from the beginning. What, I, what was I taught from the beginning? This is what y'all don't understand. What was I taught from the beginning? Why did God? Why did God even put me on this earth? I'm gonna take my time. I don't care. We're gonna get out here at one o'clock today. I don't care. Yeah. Why? Why did God even put me on this earth? Huh? There was nobody that He put on this earth. He didn't. He didn't institute love on them first. He put you here from the beginning because He loved you. And guess what? If He loved you in the beginning, He said, "I don't care where you go, what you do. I'm gonna love you in the end because I am a God who cannot make mistakes." But we're looking at what people have did, their condition, and we're overlooking God's purpose. Judas. Judas. God knew when he was born how he was going to die. God knew when he was born that he was going to betray Jesus. But then what did Judas do up until his purpose came into his life? He, he, he served the Lord. And what, what, what indicated Y'all gonna be so surprised when y'all meet Judas in heaven. What indicated that he knew the Lord? Because he went back, and when he told them, "This is a good man. Do not do this." You know what he was doing? 
He would repent it. He would repent it. So you know. Now watch what he said. He said, anyone who denies the Son doesn't have a father either. But anyone who acknowledges the Son huh, has the father. Anyone who acknowledges the Son will grow into the knowledge, will grow into the knowledge of the Holy Land. Will grow into the knowledge of the Holy Land. I'm going to read these, I'm going to do this one more time because this is very significant. And I want you to listen to this. As I get ready to wrap this up. Holiness. Acts 4 and 27. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against the holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. Acts 4 and 30. Stretch out your hands to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of the holy servant Jesus. Y'all pay attention now. Mark 1 and 24, what do you want with us? This is Mark 1 and 24 and Mark, Luke 4 and 34 say the same thing. What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know you are the Holy One of God. And then Acts 3 and 14 says, you disown the Holy, you disown the holy and Righteous One and ask the, that a murderer be released to you. Y'all don't get it? Jesus is the Holy One. One, because he came from God and he brought God's spirit down to this earth. For what? Why did he come here? Why did he come here? What did he do? Remember I told you the bookmark when he said, when he said, Moses, take off your shoes for this is hollow ground. Do you think the ground was hollow because of where it was? No, the ground was hollow because of who was walking on it. God didn't want anything. God wanted the ground to be hollow, so he told Moses, take your shoes off, Moses. Take your shoes off, so, so when you walk on the ground, it will become holy. It will become hollow. The ground will become hollow, Moses, because you're my servant. You are my servant, Moses. The ground will become hollow because you are my servant and you understand the value of the Spirit without meeting my son Jesus. So I'm going to make you a prophet. I challenge you today, in the name of Jesus Christ, why aren't you making grounds holy instead of letting the ground dictate your behavior? Why aren't you making the ground holy instead of the ground because you don't really believe in Jesus? I don't care who don't like me today. You don't believe in Jesus for real, for real. If you believe in Jesus for real, for real, you never question what God allows in your life. You never question what goes on in circumstances. You never, you never, you never because if you believe in Jesus, you never saw Jesus question God. My question to you is, do you believe in Jesus? Or is this just a ceremony you perform in the mornings when you pray? Or is it just a ceremony you perform when time gets tough? And then when it's time to show that you have the characteristics of Jesus, you fall apart. That's why the ground ain't holy. That's why the ground, wherever you walk, it ain't hollow, it's all hell going on. Because you ain't, you don't really believe in Jesus. That's why you cannot, that's why you cannot stop attacking people. That's why you can't stop hurting people. Because you really don't believe in Jesus. Because you really believe in Jesus. Who you saw Jesus attack? Who you saw Jesus hurt? How can I say I believe in somebody, love somebody, and they're showing me how to, how to please God, and I'm doing everything but. Do you really believe in Jesus? That's why you can't make no ground holy. You around him, you around him saying what, what they've been saying in church for generation to generation to generation to generation, and it just sounds like I suppose to say, I believe in Jesus. If I say it, I go to heaven. The devil ain't doing nothing but tricking you and fooling you and sending you straight to hell. Do you really believe in Jesus when Judas? Turn Jesus in. Jesus did for seven. He said, "Be quick about what you got to do." Tell you walk around me, pretend. Be quick about it. I 
am. Oh yes, I'm the great pretender. Ooh, ooh pretending that you're still around. Ooh, ooh. Now what you doing? You ain't doing up a wound in between your I love Jesus moments. You ain't doing number one in between your I love Jesus moments. But when the time comes, sister, when the time comes, Jesus taught you one thing. And he ain't teaching nothing else. He said, my daddy told you how much he hates sin. I'm getting this thing. But he gonna let me die for you. He gonna let me die for you. And everywhere I go, I'm gonna make the ground holy. He gonna let me die for you because he loves you more than he hates sin. Now, but I hear this thing. He gonna let me die for you because he loves you even more than what he hates. Even though you even though you walk around and you dating who, who God hates, God said, I still ain't gonna throw you away. Because I know just how good you are because I'm the one who made you. He said, I know that you're gonna make the ground holy. I know you are holy. So now, are you really are you really gonna continue to date your foolishness? Huh? See, when I make this ground holy right here, come here, young man. Let me show you something. When I make this ground holy, move it for a minute, Lord. When I make this ground holy, stand on it for a minute. Now, scold that by that pretty lady right there. Just don't touch it now. Stand on it. See, let me show y'all something. Y'all understand? What makes the ground holy? What makes the ground holy? Come here, man, Lord. What makes the ground holy? I done met these thugs on the street. I done met these thugs on the street. Hit me, man. Y'all hit me. Hit me, hit me. I met these thugs on the street. Hit me. I met these thugs on the street. And beat me down. Beat me down. And then, y'all go right down. Lord, have mercy, God, you're so good. Lord, you brought me through that. Lord, my God, Lord, you're so good to me, Lord. Lord, thank you, Jesus. I mean, I, I weathered the storm. I, I, they, they tried to kill me, but they couldn't kill me. Lord, I weathered the storm. I weathered the storm, Lord. I, 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 I made the ground holy. And then, guess what? Then, here comes this young man. Watch this. With my spirit. They ain't looking at the young man. They saw my spirit made it to the other side. I, I paid the way. I made the ground holy. So now, guess what? When he comes, coming this way, walk slow. Stop right there. Y'all look at him. Y'all say he got that same foolish spirit Bishop had. See? Come on. See? He walked right through holy ground. Y'all hear this? He walked right through holy ground. I had to suffer. I had to go through something that make the ground holy. And when they saw the spirit, they said, it don't matter. We gave, it. We gave Bishop our best. And he stood up. There come another fool with that same spirit. I ain't wasting my time. See, he made the ground holy. That's it. I made the ground holy so the young man can walk through without getting beat up. Oh, we need more men in here talking to these young men. Woo! You know, they're showing them how to get through life without getting beat up. Oh, and y'all can't do that because y'all so worried about your own pity parties. Oh, you worry about being, what you, you, you might die being a sacrifice. So what if you die? Oh, Listen, saints. A person in the box, they are living. God, God is a God of opposites. A person in the box, God laughing at you. You call him dead, what's alive? You call him dead, what is alive? I don't care how spiritual I get. I don't care how spiritual I get. I'm more dead than the one in the box. Why? Because I got to go that way the way he's already had to go. He done went there to get to eternal life. I still got to die. I'm more dead than him. The devil fooling the hell out of all of y'all. That man is living. I'm hell. If, I, if I'm holier than holy on this earth, I'm still in this flesh. I don't care how holy I am. I got to yet. 
the one that done did that is the one living. And I'm sitting like, right, like I'm somebody because I'm still walking on this dead earth. You better wake up and smell the roses. He's alive. If he wasn't, God would be an imperfect God. Amen. Go back to the beginning. I was made because he loved me. And if he said my sins can't change that, nothing can change that. And guess what he said? No matter what you can't overcome, I sent Jesus down with enough grace for it all. Y'all better hear this. Y'all can see this. No matter what you can't overcome, I sent Jesus down with enough grace for it all. Y'all hear this? So now, as I, as I leave you, I want you to hear this, saints. It says I must be, remain faithful to what I have been taught. I have been taught about eternal life. And I know that even Jesus had to yes. go through the pathway of death in order to get to the other side. So now anybody that has been here said that they're on the other side. Now I am more dead than the one laying there. Amen. I don't care how righteous I am. I don't care how holy I am. I don't care how saved I am. I still got to go there. <laughs> and God is laughing at all of us who don't understand the big picture. The big picture is anybody that's been there. Now they have a chance to live forever. I don't care how many people you help. I don't care how, how much you go to church. I don't care. You still got to go there. Amen. So those who have been there, they got a better chance of living than you do on this side. I'm writing these things to warn you, to warn you about those who want to lead you astray. You're at your breakthrough. Jesus was at the pinnacle of his ministry. And God came and said, it is time. And now he comes to us. He said, I got a circumstance that's coming your way. He, he done showed us. He done showed us that a sister was in trouble, a brother was in trouble. But it don't take a prophet to see uh, uh, somebody do a certain thing don't live a short life. Don't take a prophet to see that. He done showed you. He done showed you. But now here I am. Here I am. It says, but you have received the Holy Spirit and he lives within you. Holy Spirit. Well, what was the title of sermon? Remember the title of sermon? Holy Land. Holy Land. Jesus. Hello? came from God. Hello? This is why you came. Bishop, this is why you couldn't put your drugs down because you didn't realize the prophecy of the Holy Land. This is why you couldn't put down your lust because you didn't realize the prophecy of the Holy Land. This is why you couldn't put down your, 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 your isms and schisms because you didn't realize the prophecy of the Holy Land. If you realize the prophecy of the Holy Land, guess what? You'll know the power that you have. My God. Amen. The prophecy of the Holy Land is what? Jesus came from God to make the land holy. And if I'm still running around here acting, acting and reacting, acting and reacting, my land ain't yet holy. Jesus came from God. When your land becomes holy, you throw your emotions out the door because you know all is well. Because I make the ground holy, the ground don't make. Now, but it is. Holy land is what God has made me through my relationship with Jesus Christ. The holiness of God came down to man who came from the earth, which is land. And when I become the holy land, there's no doubt about who I am. There's no doubt about what God is doing. There's no doubt about any circumstances that go on around me because wherever I go, I'm going to help people see what they can't see. Because I'm the, I'm the land that has been made holy through my relationship with Jesus Christ. Man, he, and he formed man from the dust. But it hit us from the dirt. You ain't nothing but a piece of dirt. You ain't nothing but land waiting to be made holy. 
And the more you keep ignoring God, the more ignorant, ignorant, ignorant you are. Ago, I was I was stuck on stupid tore up from the floor with the title bishop because I didn't realize that I was supposed to be making this land holy, this land holy, this land holy, this land holy, this land holy. and only I made that I could only do that when I acknowledge that Jesus Christ is who He said says He is. When I acknowledge that Jesus Christ is who he says he is, that means I come into the knowledge that Jesus has made this land. Now I have power. So when you lay hands on another man, all you're doing is laying hands on the land. Holy land, laying hands on unholy hand, giving you power by your relationship with Jesus Christ. I am land. You are land. You are lame. Jesus came. Jesus, what made Jesus holy, he came from God to man. And what was his purpose? To make man holy. And where did man come from? Man. I am the holy land to make you holy. But I can't walk in doubt. That's why he said faith is in peril. It's important that I have faith. Without faith, huh? I am land that needs Somebody lay some holy hands on them. Huh? I am, when I realized I am the holy land, huh? When I walked in the room, the atmosphere shifts. Now, I don't worry about circumstances that go on around me. I don't worry about what God allows around me. Nothing deterred me from the fact that Jesus made this land holy to be purposeful. To be purposeful. Y'all got that? He made this land holy to help those who couldn't see past the circumstances. One more time. I'm writing these things to warn you about those who want to lead your faith, but you have received the Holy Spirit and He lives within you, and you don't need anyone to teach you what is true. I don't need no teaching. Because now I live according to the truth. Which says, I am spiritual. The truth is what? Huh? The truth is what? Can how do you break it down? Can what nobody do? You cannot deny that they're breathing because God let them breathe. That's the truth. Y'all don't want to say that. Y'all want to say, y'all, y'all want to predestine somebody because of, of what they're doing. The truth is, God is letting them live. And y'all don't even see it. Y'all don't even see the money, the money that punch that the Jews tried to give back. They turn it into a graveyard. Y'all hear this? They turn the bad money into a holy land. Y'all want to hear this? It was even purposeful. They took the bad money, the money, mother, the money that he got. For betraying Jesus, they took that money and formed a grave. Made what? Took bad money and made something holy. So you don't think God can take what you call a bad person and use it? You better wake up and smell the roses. My whole thing is, once I come into the knowledge who Jesus is, and when I acknowledge who Jesus is, for real, for real, I become holy land. I come into the knowledge that he came to make this flesh which is nothing but dirt. From dust you came to dust you shall what? Jesus Are you holy land? Are you holy land? Where you walk, do you do you change things? Huh? See a lot of y'all can't stand it. Y'all can't stand the pits of hell. Y'all can't stand to fight like the three Hebrew boys. Y'all can't stand to walk in the, in the, in the lion's den. These were holy men. Put it very uncomfortable. God brought me out of, out, out of my addiction. 
And he's bringing me sermons like this to let me know why he did it. To make me a holy, a, a, a piece of holy land. Which gives strength to, to land that is not what? Holy. And then when I when I get strength to land that is not holy, what am I doing in this rawest form? Huh? You can't have a kingdom without land. <laughs> in this raw form, I'm building the kingdom of God land by land, piece by piece, person by person. When they're acting crazy, I should be showing them what God can do. I should be telling them, you know what? He's in the hands of God. He's all right. She's in the hands of God. She's all right. The girl out there on the streets can't do that for herself, running around selling her body. She in the hands of God. She all right. How you treat her says who you are, who hands you in. Y'all hear me? Are you, it ain't, it, the question ain't, is he or she all right? The question is, are you all right? Have you become land that is holy? And God said, now, everywhere you go, huh? What he said? What did Mr. Nisha get in this? Mr. Nisha, he told him to take his shoes off. Why? Because he wanted his flesh to touch flesh. He wanted holy flesh to touch unholy flesh. He wanted holy flesh to touch unholy flesh. And when the holy flesh touched the unholy flesh, it made the unholy flesh holy. Why? Why did it make the unholy flesh? Because God sent it there for that purpose. God sent a minister in the midst of chaos for the purpose of making the people who are in chaos holy. But if I get stuck and I start acting like them and forget where home is, I end up unholy too. I'm praying for y'all. You have not heard than to hear that it's no God. You got no business being a holy piece of land, being emotional about nothing, because the evidence that you are holy is you first put down your emotion, because Jesus never demonstrated emotions. My God. Never! Ah! I don't care. I can say what I am, but when the, when the rubber meets the pavement, what am I? Am I a holy land? Never saw that coming, did you? Are you a holy land? I want you to feel this why I stop right here. So now guess what? If you are holy and you hear this sermon today, God says, walk in your holiness and come to the altar right now. If you're a holy land and you're hearing this sermon and you want to put down what you want to put down, he said, walk in your holiness and come to the altar right now.